Hi, my name is Murphy Pern. I'm a certified wine consultant and the founder of Matter of Wine, a business that produces educational wine events. In this video, we are going to teach you how rosés are made. We'll begin by discussing the most common way of rosé winemaking, short maceration. First, the grapes are harvested and brought to a winery. Then, machines are used to crush the grapes, producing a liquid mixture of grape juice with skins, seeds, and pulp, called a must. At this point in the process, the winemaker includes the skins of dark grapes in the fermentation vessel. The skins are generally left to macerate in the wine for six to 48 hours, leaching some color and tannin into the wine. Yeast is introduced into the vessel, converting the sugars in the must into alcohol. Finally, the wine is filtered and fined to achieve clarity before it makes its way into a bottle. Knowing this, you can probably guess how white winemaking and red winemaking differ. In white winemaking, the skins of dark grapes are separated from the must, so it doesn't get any color from them. In red winemaking, the skins generally macerate for a longer period of time, one to four weeks, to impart more color and tannin into the finished wine. A second way of producing rosé is direct pressing. Direct pressing involves having machines crush and gently press the grapes until a little color from the skin is extracted. No maceration is involved. The grape skins do not spend time steeped in the must. The most delicately pale rosé wines are usually made in this method. A third way of rosé winemaking is the Saunier method. While red wine is fermenting in a vessel, some of the juice is siphoned off of the tank early in the maceration process. What's siphoned off is then fermented in a separate vessel as a rosé. As this leaves the red wine fermentation tank with more grape skins and less juice, it can now be fermented into a more concentrated, darker wine. The fourth and least common way of producing rosé is blending. A small amount of red wine is added to a white wine to make it a rosé. This method is not allowed in the EU, with the exception of rosé champagne, and generally not utilized by producers of fine wine. In recent years, rosé wines have started to experience a real boom with worldwide consumption increasing by over 20%. In the US, this figure is over 40%. If you're interested in rosé, now is the time to dive in, as more and more rosés from around the world are becoming easily accessible. Thank you for exploring rosés with us. My name is Murphy Pern of Matter of Wine, and I'm here to answer all of your wine how-tos.